going to do, and, and hopefully um, other student gets here before I get to this point, but what I want to do is I want to, last time we talked about sort of to sketch out how we would do this, all right? So what I want to do is I want to give you some further tips on how to do the stuff that we talked about last time so that you can kind of get up to where we were um, uh, uh, working on last time and then go back uh, and and talk more about well, like what the next step is. All right, so if you remember last time we talked about in our tic-tac-toe game, we wanted to be able to have a grid or a table containing a total of nine image views. And we wanted to be able to click on the image view and change um, essentially an empty cell into a, um, a cell that was either an X or a cell that was an O based on, um, based on whoever's turn it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new application here. I have, I've been working on this myself as well. There we go. Uh, I've been working on this, cell, uh, on this myself as well. So, so what I'm going to do is start a new application and I'm going to cover um, the parts of it that we talked about last time and to talk about some tips and then we'll go over and we'll talk about how to do the next step of it. All right, so let me go in and create a new project and it will be an Android project and I will call it Tick, tack, toe, um, let's see, lecture, to indicate I'm doing this during the lecture. Create an activity, create in workspace. Have our icons. It's going to be a blank screen main activity, and finish. All right, so we have this. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to create our table view, all right, for the layout. And in order to do this, I'm going to copy some of the things over just to make it uh, quicker to type. So I'm going to open up, um, I'm going to open up my layout file from my completed version, or nearly completed version, and I'm going to copy it over. So I'll copy that into here. All right. And what I have is, again, I have a table layout that consists of three rows, and each row consists of three image views. I'm going to do a couple more prep things. I'm going to take and copy my strings file over, and we'll see how we're going to use those strings in a bit. And then I'm going to create the images for the tic-tac-toe. The image that indicates that, no, that nothing's been selected, the image that indicates that uh, an X has been selected, and uh, the, the image that indicates an O has been selected. All right. So, if I go here, I have, did you bring in food? Yes. Oh man, that smells good. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I, I thought maybe it was, uh, maybe it was just my, my mind uh, thinking uh, that it's getting hungry or something. No, 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 no. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to copy the images over, and I just I just went into a, a simple text editor and created them. Yeah, I just went in and um, in fact I think I used a web tool. I think I just went out on the web and looked for you know online paint program, 
and I use that to create the X and the O's. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you just used paint. Well, I, 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 it was an online version of paint. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing, you know, the stuff that's there. Now, to bring it in to your application, um, you can just drag over. this into the medium drawable. So I draw, dragged over the O. And I'm going to copy the file in as opposed to link to the file. If I link to the file, I'd have to leave it in this individual or in its original location. And I don't want to do that. I, I just I want to have this sort of be sort of self-contained. So I'm going to copy that file in there. So there's the O. Here's the X. And here is the question mark. All right. So what I have now in the activity, there's next to nothing there. There is simply inflating the XML from our activity main. And that's about it. We have this code for the menu. We're not going to have a menu at this point, so I'll eliminate this. Let me run this now. And what we should have is we should have a grid of the nine question marks. All right, our three image rows, each image row consisting of an image view, each image view having its own ID, and so on. So let's go and run this. And what I'll get on here is an error in the XML file. Oh, I forgot my end table layout tag. All right, now we should now we should be good to go. Aaron XML file again. No element found. Repeat that, please. I hope not. Where here? No, um, go back to that. Uh, go to the right on your mouse. That little. Oh, here? Yeah. That's weird. XML. Air parsing XML. No. Let me just try copying it over again.
see if there's any other errors going on here. Okay, so go here and say Android Tools. This one, cleaning lint markers. Oh, you know what? R cannot be resolved to a variable. Oh. Okay, let's see here. So it's telling me that it doesn't know R. Import R. No, this one runs. Um, properties Android. Activity main is not a oh it's not a, a field because it thinks there's an XML problem in it. tells me junk after document element air parsing XML junk Did I have, let's see. Is 
is not allowing me to delete that. I'm going to exit Eclipse and try it again. We'll give this one more shot. If this doesn't work, we'll go back to my one that worked. Oh, where to get that absolute layout from? Um, when you start typing the table layout at the end, the little like intelligent right. thing came up, and I don't know, maybe when you press enter or something, it got confused. And I don't know. Okay, well, we're making progress here. Got rid of that one. And Doesn't know activity main. I'm going to go and rename that guy to main to see if that will cause it to re recognize it. Now, if you're going to rename something, you can't just go and rename it. You have to go up here and say refactor, rename, and I'll go and save that. And I'll give this a name of main.xml. And let's see if that works. Oh, I have that in there now. <sighs> Yay, now I, it's going to work. Or I'm going to cry on camera. <laughs> All right, finally. Yeah, it did, but I brought in the R from Android, and I want the resources from this app. So that was a mistake on my part. Okay, yay. And we have the grid of question marks. Okay, so what did we learn from that? We learned that there was garbage at the end of my XML file that I couldn't get to. All right, and I thought I had gotten rid of it, but I didn't. All right, and closing Eclipse and going to the bottom uh, corrected it. It told me that it couldn't find that because there was an error in the XML file. I mistakenly clicked the import thinking that would fix it and it brought in that R from Android as opposed to the resources from Android as opposed to the resources from this app. We want to use our resources, not the resources from, so we want to use that R Java and not the resources from, uh, from Android. Okay. All right. So now we have this. Now what we want to do is we want to add an on-click listener to a to, to the different cells. All right? Because what we want to do is when the user clicks on it, we want to switch it. All right? Now there's a few ways that we can add an on-click listener. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say this activity implements 
and click listener. I'm going to go in my activity and say that it implements on click listener. Now, what does that mean when I say it implements on click listener? Doesn't use it necessarily. It means it's going to fill the role of on click listener. All right. I was thinking of this how to express the difference between inheritance and implements. And inheritance is a strong uh, is a relationship. In other words, our main activity extends activity, which means our main activity is an activity. This, act, this main activity class is also going to play the role of an on-click listener. Now, it doesn't like it right now. The reason it doesn't like it is because we don't have an on-click method to this. In order for an object to implement, or in order for a class to implement this interface, it has to have the proper methods in it. So, what I can do is I can say public void on-click All right, and I'm going to have to import view. So now we got rid of that error, right? Because our main activity can implement the on-click listener. Now why do you suppose I made this implement the on-click listener? What would my other choices be if I didn't make this implement it? Yeah, that actually, if I'm understanding you right, that's called an anonymous class. So I don't really define a class. I would say, um, for example, um, image, image view 1, 1, set on click listener equals, and then I would have new on click listener, and then in parentheses on click, and I would define essentially an on click listener without creating a class that has a name to it. All right? Exactly. The reason I'm doing it this way is because every one of those X's is going to get handled the same way. Right? Every one of those, not X's, but question marks is going to get handled the same way. So I could have the same on-click listener for each one. If I did an anonymous listener, all right, I could get that to work, and I could get that to work a number of different ways. But in my mind, it's more straightforward to just say, hey, I'm going to create a listener uh, object. Um, or I'm going, to make th I'm going to make this guy serve in the role of a listener object so I don't have to create another object. So otherwise you would have to create a separate conflict listener for each? Well, if you created an anonymous class, then yes, you'd have to. You'd create a new on-click listener that way. Or I could put an inner class down here and say my on-click listener or on click listener, my on click listener, and create it that way. All right. Again, there's a few different ways that you can do this. What I like about this is this is pretty simple. And I don't want to do different things depending on what gets clicked. Each one of these boxes, the rules for it being clicked are the same. So now what I have to do is I have to go and I have to change the image for the one that was clicked on. If I'm using the same on-click listener for each box, how do I know which one gets clicked on?
Actually, it's easier than that. This on click event gets past the view that got clicked. So which image got clicked? Well, the one that's in the, the view argument. This, this argument V that gets passed in. So, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to say um, I'm going to create I'm going to do this just for one image view I11 and of course I have to import image view then I'm going to say I11 equals cast to image view find view by ID make sure I got the right syntax for that And I'm going to give it the ID of that first cell. All right. If we look here, that first cell has an ID of, whoops, cell 11. So I have in here. I11, that's this instance variable, equals image view, find view by ID, R ID cell 1. So now I can assign the on click listener to it. So I can say I11 set on click listener and this is where I could define the anonymous class, right? I could say new on click listener blah 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 but since this activity class is also serving the role of the on click listener I simply say this and it's okay this means whatever object you're in so because this the line this is in this code It means this object. Yep. I, I the first part of the, the first part of that question I, I get because this. What was the second part? I can I. Yes, I can I can apply the methods of an on click listener into that. And this method will, in fact, get called when I click that. If it wasn't implementing that, yeah, you'd have to create the method, right. By virtue of the fact that this implements on click listener, I have to create that, that. So whatever I assign as the on click listener of that has to have this on click method on it. Because the framework is expecting that. So when this guy gets clicked, there has to be something to handle it. So there has to be an object out there that has an on-click method. And by virtue of the fact that we're implementing this interface, we guarantee that this guy does have that method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something for debugging purposes. And again, I'm going to use toast. Now what is toast? Toast is a way to just pop up a little message, largely for debugging purposes, but you can use it for other things as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my on-click event
Just a little message saying that it got clicked. All right. So let's see what that does. All right, here's our, oh, not yet. Here's our tic-tac-toe. And if I click on that, notice I get a little message up there that pops up that says clicked. All right. So that's very valuable for debugging. I, I, I do that a lot. That, that just pops up a little message on the screen that says it. Now, why don't these other guys trigger that message? Because I haven't set the on click listener for those guys. All right. Not creating, yeah, not creating that. So, like for a message that you just want to sort of pop up for a second and then disappear, it, it doesn't require. Like if you think about it, it, it's you could use it in a production application to like tell the user maybe like a download finished. All right, a download finish, you don't necessarily want to interrupt and pop up an alert and then they have to click OK. You just want to flash on the screen, hey, your download finished. And then, then it, it shows up, they can see it for a while, and then it disappears. But it's also good for debugging. Now, what I want to do here is I want to change, I can get rid of this now, or I'll comment it out. What I want to do is I want to change the image. All right. So I can say I can say that I, I set image resource R drawable X. So when I click on it, I'm going to change it to X. I am also going to set the tag to the same thing. This R, R drawable X actually turns to an, uh, actually is an integer. Why am I setting the tag for this guy? I'm setting the image resource to the X image, which is in my drawables. I'm also setting the tag to the X image. Any idea why I do that? We did that, if you remember, in the spot on game. The spot on game, we wanted to know if it was a red or a green spot. So we set the tag to the image, to the resource image integer, so we could test it later. It's just a way, the tag is just a way to remember something about that image view. So we're going to use this later on to find out, hey, is this an X? Is this an O? Or has it been not picked yet? All right? So what I'm going to do now when I run this, Uh, pops up our tic-tac-toe thingy, and if we touch that, it turns to an X. Of course, we can touch it over and over again, and it stays an X. All right? Now, how are we going to flip this so that the next one turns into an O? How do we control? Because I set that on click listener to be an X if they click it. I don't always want, to, want it to be an X. Sometimes I want it to be an O. So how do I do that? Depending on whose turn it is. Now, how are we going to remember whose turn it is? Keep in mind, we can do this a couple different ways. Here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to set a my turn variable here, or whose turn. And I'm going to set it equal to negative 1. 
All right. I'm then going to define two public static final variables. What is a public static final variable? Or what are they sometimes called in other programming languages? It's a constant. All right. Why do I declare a constant? Well, because of my code, I'm going to make it so that negative 1 means that it's x's turn. 1 means it's O's term. All right? So, if I put code in here that said if whose turn equals negative 1, that would be confusing for me to read. Right? I'd have to, like, stop and think for a second. What does negative 1 mean? If I make that an x, then it's clear that, oh, if it's x's turn. If it's not x's turn, it must be o's turn. So I can do the same thing for this, except I'm going to set the tag to drawable o and Got to set the tag to O. Oops. Now, how am I going to change it from X's turn to Y's turn? I could do it with an if statement, right? I could say if it was X's turn, make it Y's turn, or uh, make it O's turn. If it's O's turn, make it X's turn. But, well, I initialized whose turn to negative 1. So that means that it starts out always as being X's turn. So if I want to flip it to Y, uh, I, I keep saying Y. I want that to be an O. All I have to do is say whose turn equals whose turn times negative 1. Y times negative 1? Well, if, it, if it's O's turn and whose turn has a value of 1, that'll make, O's that will make whose turn be a negative 1. If it's negative 1, it'll make it 1. So this will alternate between a value of negative 1 and 1, all right? And effectively, it will change between O and X's turn. So I go here and I run this. And... Changes it to X, O. Changes it to an O. Not good. It's remembering whose turn it is, and it's changing it, but I shouldn't be able to change it if it's already been set. So I'm doing the toggling of the turn correct. I'm just not doing correct the setting of, of this. Because I'm not looking to see if it's already been set. I'm setting it no matter what. Okay? How can I check to see if it's already been set? I can look to see if it has a tag associated with it. Right? Because when I set the image, I set the tag. So, I can say... If... My mistake here, this should be V. Uh, crap. We'll go back and fix that in a second. If the tag of this view is null, then I am okay 
to go and change it to either an X or an O depending on whose turn it is. Now my problem is I said this as I11. I don't want that to be I11. I want that to be whatever image view got passed to this guy, which is in V. So I'll say image view I equals, I'm going to cast that view V as an image view. And here I'll say I. The reason I do that, again, is I don't always want to do this to cell 1-1, one, one, to that particular image view. I want to do it to whichever image view I've touched. Which image view have I touched is in the argument V. But the onClick event accepts as an argument A view and not an image view, so I have to cast it as an image view. Because I know that the only thing that I'm applying a on-click event on this is an image view, so I can safely go and do that. Yes. Yeah. That will cover that when we do this. Let me go and do a second one of these. Image view one, two, and I'll say, now, we'll do actually a couple of these. We'll do the first row. Now, your programmer senses may be going off at this point. Because if you've had me in any other class, you probably heard me say, don't repeat yourself. All right? And this block of code suspiciously looks like I'm repeating myself. But we're not going to worry about that for now. All right? We're going to get this working, and then we're going to look to see how we can improve it. All right, I guess that's my philosophy. Depending on, you know, we could address it now, but I'm going to say let's get it working and then we'll come back and clean it. I can say that for a couple reasons. For one thing, I know by definition a tic-tac-toe is a 3x3 three three grid, right? So I know that at most I'm going to have nine of these. So this isn't like in some cases where I'll say, well, what if we added another well, if we made it a 4x4, four four, well, that's changing the rules of tic-tac-toe. <laughs> All right? So we don't really have to worry about that. All right? Because I know by definition it's a 3x3 three three grid, so I know there's only going to be 9. And that's not that many. And it is repeating ourselves, and so we probably could do a better job, but I'm not going to worry about that now. Now when I run this guy... I get the first row should work. So I touch the first one, it changes it to an X. Oops. I touch the second one in the row, it changes it to an O. I touch the third one, it changes it to an X. If I go back and try to touch this one again, doesn't work. Doesn't change it to an O. All right? Now, you notice something, and you asked me about it today. Watch what happens when I do this. Ooh, everything's back to question marks. What do we do? Well, why did it do that, first of all? Whenever there's a change in configuration of the device, and it could be changing the language of the device, like I could go and change from, from English to French, let's say. Or I could go and change whatever properties. Whenever there's a change in configuration, it actually recreates the activity. Well, that's not so good here, right? 
because recreating the activity sets everything back to, to, to the starting point. So we have a couple choices in this. The right way to do this is to write code to handle it. And we can write code to handle it so that when the application restarts, it remembers the state that it was in and uses that as a starting point instead of the, 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 the initial starting point. But I'm going to cheat for now. All right? And I'm going to go and put my manifest, what do you think? I'm going to put in my manifest the fact that I can't change the orientation of this. It's great being a teacher of the class, right? Because if I don't want to deal with a problem, I can just come up with a workaround and say, well, that's what we're going to do for now. And I think that's important because, yeah, this is an issue, but there's other issues with this app, too, that I want to get to. And if we have time, we'll come back and fix this. Just like if we have time, we'll refactor it to maybe make our code a little cleaner. So now when we run it, Now when we run, now when we run it, Ah, screen orientation. Now when we go and run it, we change the orientation, doesn't do anything. All right? Which, you can make the argument, is a good thing. Right? Because if you imagine playing tic-tac-toe, how would you play it if you're playing against another person? Well, you, want, you would make your choice, hand the tablet to someone else, in that, there's bound to be switching of orientation. So if we keep it at a, at a straight um, um, static rotation of, of portrait, then we don't have to worry about um, destroying and recreating the application, or rather re refreshing, saving the application state and so on. All right, now going forward, what's our next step? We have it now where, where we have the mechanism of the clicking of the event, uh, the clicking event to work. All right. I, I don't think there's much else we have to change about that. What is the other thing we have to do after we've clicked, after we've made a choice? Pardon me. Okay. You have to see if there's a winner. Or more precisely, we have to see if the game's over. All right. What are the two ways the game can be over? Someone won, and what's the other way? Yeah, there's a tie. What's another way to say there's a tie? All the boxes are filled. All right. So what we're going to do is after the on-click event, after it goes in, and after a person made their move, we're going to call a function that's going to look at the board and evaluate it. How many different winning positions are there in tic-tac-toe? Well, you could, someone could have a whole row. 
Yeah, someone could have someone could have row one, someone could have row two, someone could have row three. That's three. Yeah, someone could have column one, someone could have column two, and someone could have column three. That's three more. So that's six. And finally, they could have diagonal, diagonal. If you think about it, though, if you're clever about writing your code, really there's sort of three positions you could narrow it down to, or maybe even less. Number one. Someone has a whole row. Number two, someone has a whole column. Number three, someone has a diagonal. So, you could hard code these. You could say if cell one equals x and if cell one one equals x and cell uh, one two equals x and cell one three equals x, then x wins. If cell 1, 1 equals 0, and cell 1, 2 equals 0, and cell 1, 3 equals 0, then O wins. Then you could do that for row 2, and you could do that for row 3. Then you could do that for column 1, column 2, column 3. But if you put everything in an array, you can really speed up that processing. So you're, you don't have to exhaustively test all eight of the scenarios. You can test to see in one loop does someone have a whole row. You can test in one loop does someone have a whole column and then you can write a couple of additional cases to test whether someone has a diagonal. Alright? So that's the next thing that we're going to worry about. Alright? So after they've made a move you're going to call a function that looks to see if they have um, if someone is one. That function is going to evaluate the eight positions and see if anyone has one of those. If so, they're the winner. If not, we're going to look to see if there are any empty spaces. And if there's no winner and there's no empty spaces, then you got a tie. All right? So you're looking for one of the eight winning situations or no empty spaces remain. One indicates that someone won, one indicates that the game is a tie. Um, what will you do then? I would put up an alert. I guess you could do that with toast, or you could actually put up an alert, because that's kind of an important thing, who won. And then, when you click OK, you'd call a function to reset the game, which would start everything back at square zero, it would set everything back to... Um, question marks, would know out the um, tag for each image, would set whose turn back to X, and it would start again from there. Now, where, where were you at with that? If I'm not mistaken, you had the mechanics of hitting the X's and O's right, but you didn't have the evaluation bit. It's oh, you're done! Wow! I know you said you were done. I thought you were done with like just that one section of it. I didn't realize you were done with everything. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, what What did you do just for conversation? And again, there's there's a lot of ways to do different. You know, whole bunch of statements for what? Uh huh. Okay. 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 That makes sense. Okay. None of those things are bad things, by the way. None of those things, you know, none of those things are like, oh, that's a horrible way to do it. I'd have to see it. Okay, well, again, um, we could look at, and maybe the next phase, and maybe, um, you, know, um, you know, we could look at and see, like, how we could maybe streamline a little bit. All right. All right, questions. Um, let's go up to lab. Is anyone going to lab? Okay. I know I have a student from another class coming, so regardless if... All right, we'll see you up there.